so hello everyone welcome to this video in the previous videos of uh, the this module that is network theorems we have discussed uh, two of the very important uh, theorems that is one is superposition theorem another one is thevenin's theorem okay and in for thevenin's theorem we have seen how to solve the problems related to independent as well as dependent sources and various kind of problems we have seen in this module okay uh, so two theorems i have already covered those who have not seen that video please go and see that okay so i won't be wasting time now then le let's go with a third theorem which is very similar to thevenin's theorem there is only one single change in the last step that is in thevenin's theorem what you have seen at the end we would be having vth voltage okay along with that one series z equivalent resistance right but in this case norton's theorem uh, listen to me very carefully that is one single change is there in case of vth voltage now we are having one norton's current okay in a, in a, here also the same thing in this case we are going to find the norton's equivalent circuit in all, in all of our problems in thevenin's uh, theorem how we we were finding the thevenin's equivalent circuit in the at the end right similarly for norton's theorem also our goal is to find the norton's equivalent circuit and that norton's equivalent circuit would be consisting of a norton current that is i suffix n okay this is the norton current and along with that you know that in if there is one current source that impedance that is z equivalent would be in parallel okay so that's why that's only one single change that is we would be having one norton current and one equivalent impedance in parallel okay not in series because this is a current source that's only one single change in the uh, uh, that's only one difference in norton's theorem so that's why i won't be explaining the proof part it is the similar as similar to that of the thevenin's theorem only so i have uh, the statement part here okay so let's read out the statement and let us try to understand it so the statement says that any combination of linear bilateral circuit elements and active sources regardless of connection or complexity connected through a given load load impedance zl that can be replaced by simple two terminal network consisting of single current source in okay i suffix n that is the norton current which is represented in amperes and a single impedance source z equivalent in parallel with it see i have told you right there would be one parallel connection that was i mentioned it here and single impedance z equivalent and the norton current in would be connected parallelly or in shunt across the two terminals of the load impedance zl okay here also they would be giving you one load impedance zl the in current the in that is the norton current is the short circuit current flowing through the short circuited path replaced instead of zl so here one one more change is there that is in case of thevenin's theorem what we were doing uh, in order to find the vth voltage we had the load resistance right that load resistance branch only we were removing in order to find the vth right here this is the opposite we should not be opening the branch instead of that we should be removing this uh, uh load resistance and we should be shorting okay that after removing it would be looking like this and that path we should be naming it as in that is norton's current that's only one change here okay that will be mentioned here that is in is the short circuit current flowing through the short circuited path replaced instead of load impedance zl okay that we will be understanding while solving the problem it is also called as norton's current then for the equivalent impedance the which, which are already seen in thevenin's theorem the same that is z equivalent is the equivalent impedance of the given network as viewed through the terminals where zl is connected with zl removed and all the active sources are replaced by their internal impedances okay that we have already seen if they are not known then the independent voltage or current sources must be replaced by short circuits and open circuits respectively this theorem is also called the dual of thevenin's theorem that is the dual means it is the replica of thevenin's theorem okay this is because if the thevenin's equivalent voltage source is converted to an equivalent current source then norton's equivalent is obtained okay so that is so here we have one thevenin circuit here as i have told the vth voltage is in series with the equivalent impedance if you want to replace this thevenin circuit into norton circuit what you should be doing is replace this current source voltage source by current source that is vth is replaced by norton that is thevenin's voltage is replaced by norton's current and this uh, impedance would be coming in parallel or in shunt in case of norton and in case of thevenin it would be in series okay this is the simple change hope you understood the norton's theorem very carefully 
okay just uh, the statement uh, is very important if you understand the statement you can try to solve the problem and one more change that is i have told you right in the first step that is the calculation of i n uh, norton current i n what we should be doing we should be we should not be remo removing the branch of load impedance we should be taking that load impedance and we should be making the short circuit okay and then find the value of i n by applying the loop loop formula that is mesh analysis okay hope this is clear this is all about uh, norton's theorem very easy theorem if you know thevenin's this is just the replica of that norton's okay you, you can easily score marks so now we are having a, a one single problem in this session related to norton's theorem let us solve that and wind this session so this is the first question related to Nor norton's theorem that is find the current through this 16 ohm resistor okay using norton's theorem that is our goal here is to find the current through the 16 ohm resistor using Norton's theorem okay where they have given one dependent source here that is current control current source CCCS or ICIS current control current is controlling this current source and this is one dependent source and this IX is flowing through this branch that is 16 ohm resistance but they have asked us to find the value of current flowing through the 16 ohm resistance using Norton's theorem so now let's analyze this circuit first and one conclusion we can come with that that is 0.8 IX is equal to zero why it is zero if you just try to analyze the circuit that is why a point eight i x is equal to zero that is this is here in this case they mentioned this as the load resistance right so uh, in our first step the calculation of norton's current what we should be doing here is i have told you we should be removing this load resistance that is we should be making this zero right so now this current i x would be replaced by i n so now what this would be happening 0 0.8 ix would be equal to 0 because when it is replaced this ix current we won't be having any impedance here we won't be having any resistance here so that's why this would be equal to 0 so finally our value of ix would be equal to 0 this ix value we would be using it later okay while we solve the problem so now calculation of in part what we should be doing it right uh, we should be replacing this load resistance and we should be replacing with the short circuit so now rewrite that circuit again six ohm resistance and this is short circuit don't have any resistance here so that is i n this is six ohm 0.8 i n this is uh, 10 ohm this is 40 volt okay name these two loops here one is i1 and this loop you name it name it as i2 okay so like this we have named the loops here now try to solve the problem before that we can see that this dependent source is between these two loops so what we can write is 0 0.8 in is equal to i1 minus i2 okay this one part we have written it because this is between these two loops so we can uh, write like this but one more thing is there that is this i n current is equal to i 2 so i n is equal to i 2 since these two are having the same currents one is i i n and one is i 2 so that's why 0 0.8 uh, uh, sorry uh, i n would be equal to i 2 so now bring put this in this equation that is 0 0.8 i 2 is equal to i 1 minus i 2 so i2 minus i2 bring it to this side this would be plus i2 is equal to i on so our i now we know that i2 is equal to i n so now substitute that now 0 0.8 i n plus i n is equal to i1 so 1.8 i n is equal to i1 so i n is equal to i1 divided by 1.8 so this is one equation we have got here this you name it as equation 1 here okay this equation you will be using in the later part because our goal here is to find the Norton's current that we have up, up, uh, applied here by uh, writing this equation of uh, we can say that super mesh equation of when we are having one dependent current source okay now what to do is Since this is one super mesh, I have told you this we have one current source between two loops, so we can write the direct super mesh equation now. That is, 
this would be considering as one single loop now that is start from 40 then we have minus 10 i1 then we have minus 6 i don't write i2 because this is i2 is equal to i n so we can write it as minus 6 i n directly that is equal to 0 now in this case substitute the value of i n and this term that is 40 minus 10 i1 minus 6 into i1 divided by 1.8 equal to 0 substitute like this so that we will be getting the value of i1 and that value of i1 so we would be substituting in this equation so that we would be getting our current i n ok so 40 minus 10 i1 then we have minus 6 divided by 1.8 ok do that in the calculator 6 divided by 1.8 we would be getting 3.33 i1 equal to 0 so that would be equal to minus 10 i1 minus 3.33 i1 is equal to 40 bring it to other side it would be minus 40 so take cancel all the minus signs here then we would be left with 13.33 i1 10 plus 3.33 is 13.33 equal to 40 so i1 would be equal to 40 divided by 13.33 so our i1 value is if you divide this you would be getting around 3.007 ampere okay the value of i1 so now substitute this value back in this equation i'll write it here only that is i n is equal to 3.007 divided by 1.8 so that is equal to 1.667 ampere okay you can check it later so this is our norton's current i n but we have not done yet our goal is we should be writing the Norton's equivalent circuit and after that they have told us to find the current through 16 ohm resistor right so now our next is aim is to the calculation of z equivalent part that is calculation of z equivalent here in this case the rule again changes because now the, the formula for z equivalent is equal to VOC divided by IN not ISC because now we are having the Norton's current in the picture also here in this problem we are not uh, we are having one dependent source so that's why I have told you for dependent source we are having this formula that is keep the 40 volt uh, voltage source as it is we should not be replacing any voltage sources as I have told you then this dependent source also you should be keeping it as it is then we have one 6 ohm resistance only the load resistance we should be removing right that only we should be keeping it open this is 6 ohm 10 ohm but here if you observe carefully in the starting part we have written ix is equal to 0 right so when ix is equal to 0 this whole term would be equal to 0 this whole branch would be going ok so that's why we would be left with only 10 ohm 6 ohm and this is the Vx voltage here ok 40 volt but here now our goal is to find the VOC voltage in order to find the equivalent impedance that is VOC open circuit voltage this is the open circuit that is equal to Vx so what we can do is VOC we can directly write it as 40 ohm because if we trace it from here since this is open circuit the voltage flow is only 40 volt because this is open circuit voltage so that's why this only would be our voltage so directly we can write VOC equal to 40 volt so we have found I, I n VOC so directly substitute that in the z equivalent formula that is 40 divided by Norton's current which we have found out here that is 1.667 so that is if you divide it you would be getting around 23.95 ohms so this is our z equivalent value now write the equivalent Norton circuit okay that is Norton current first 1.67 ampere then in parallel we should be writing the z equivalent that is 20, 23.95 then in parallel to that again now we should be bringing in the, into the picture the load which you have uh, short circuited first that is 16 ohm right so now they have asked us to find the equivalent current through the 16 ohm resistance now it is simple that is we should be doing i is equal to V by R right that is these two are in parallel 
so we should be doing the equivalent resistance uh, if you don't do that also it is possible that is write this uh, value of uh, this current source into this uh, resistance divided by the sum of these two that is since we have one formula for i that is uh, i dash r divided by r1 plus r2 i dash r1 divided by r1 plus r2 where this is r1 and r2 so sum of these two that is 39.95 i have not done this step by step either you can do this step by step by taking the equivalent resistance of these two then after that convert it to a single resistance then we can we could be finding the value okay so i have not done that if you solve this you would be getting around approximately 1 ampere you can check it later okay so this is our current here in this circuit so hope this problem is clear to you all okay very important problem related to norton's theorem so that's all for this session uh, we have solved one problem in the next session we are going to solve two more problems and be thorough with this concept so that's all guys like this video share this playlist to a huge number thank you